Hello and welcome to etcfo.com. My name is Amol Dete and I'm in conversation with Pratik Jain, National Editor for Indirect Tax from PwC. Pratik, welcome on the show. Thank you, Amol. Thank you. To begin with, I have, you know, two, three very important questions specifically related to GST because India Inc. is, you know, demanding so many things related to GST from the government. And in fact, government has also not released the data for various reasons on the GST. And what we understand is they are going to have a GST council meeting very, very soon. So Pratik, what I would like you to tell us is what are the major challenges that the India Inc. is facing specifically related to GST and what are their demands from the government? Sure. Uh, so uh, see, if, uh, GST is clearly one of the areas where industry is very hopeful that some relief will come. Right. If you see world over, different countries have come up with their own a GST packet because any change or any reduction in GST rate immediately right. spurs the demand, right? Because you know, eighteen percent, twelve percent on on your uh, sort of output is a substantial amount. Right. Now, I think India perhaps does not have too much of fiscal space for a large scale exemptions, right? And mm -hmm. therefore, government will have to see that what they can give in the interim to the industry. The biggest issue, to my mind, is liquidity. For, uh, for the industry, that how can we have more cash uh, to operate my sort of business and, uh, and incur certain business expenses, which are, which are critical. There, uh, the government had come up with a scheme for only MSMEs, where they had said that tax which you collect, you can defer it uh, by three months or so. But for the larger businesses, nothing of that sort came and they, they had to, you know, they could defer the liability, but they had to pay interest of 9%. Right. So I think the first and foremost <clears throat> is that is that uh, they need some kind of a working capital cushion at this point in time. Mm -hmm. That can be given a by deferring the GST that you collect and maybe come up with a installment scheme that okay you pay this GST that you're collecting now in six months over you know six installments without payment right. of any interest. The other is what happens to the amount which is already stuck with the government in terms of refunds, et cetera. One is the export related refund where some bit of work has already happened, but a lot needs to be done. Larger companies have not got the refunds to, to the extent they were uh, hoping that they'll get. Hmm. Also, a lot of companies are sit, sitting with a lot of credits in the books, which we call it the inverted right. duties. Uh, sort of, so what is happening is a lot of people had purchased uh, inventory, but because of the lockdown, their output has become virtually nil. And therefore they have a lot of uh, raw material, etc., which they, they already have, on which tax has been paid. Hmm. As of now, there is no mechanism for a refund on that, right? So government needs to come up. We have also made a recommendation that whatever yeah. uh, you know amount is stuck in terms of excess input credit, please allow the industry to get it back, okay? Hmm. And uh, you know, so that's another thing. Uh, government had, uh, in many cases, they had blocked the input credit of businesses where there was, uh, you know, the, uh, there was a rule earlier that if your vendor has put in an invoice uh, worth 100 and you have claimed more than 110 as a credit, then they, right. uh, you know, they block the credit uh, from the back end. Those things need to be released right now. So in essence, what I'm saying is working capital, liquidity is the biggest ask of, uh, you know, the industry at this point in time. In addition right. to that, right. there are specific sectors like real estate and hospitality, etc., where the government might want to look at a reduction in tax rate. Yes, mm -hmm. the collections and all that, you know, as expected are not uh, buoyant. And of course, nobody was expecting that. But you have to look at certain industry segment differently from, from others, right? So I guess nobody is expecting a large scale kind of a relief or exemptions, uh, et cetera, because we perhaps don't have the fiscal space. But if the government looks at certain industry specifically, for some relief and at a larger level, you know, providing some liquidity, that will be very helpful. Okay, uh, interesting. But you know, refund is very, very um, interesting area, which all the CFOs and the India Inc is actually uh, raising with the government since really long. I would like you to explain me a bit more here and tell us, you know, is there a major mismatch? Is there a major challenge? You know, why do you think, because government has also announced many times that they will process the refunds very fast, specifically for MSME sector. Uh, and uh, I mean, they obviously didn't say anything specifically on the large sector, but at least MSME sector, they announced that they will you know, do that. But is there any mismatch? What could be the reasons that the government is still holding the refund? 
See, there are, uh, look, uh, to give some credit there, which where, it, where it is due, uh, there is a lot of stuff that has happened on refund. Uh, particularly mm -hmm. for the MSME, there were data where I think in the last couple of months, more than 10,000 crore refunds have already been sanctioned, right? Mm -hmm. But those are refunds typically of lower value, okay, right. for a large okay. number of assessees. So they have, in terms of percentage, number of companies which have got covered are large. Mm -hmm. But the refund which is stuck could be much more than what has been released, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one is, uh, you know, the issue is that obviously most of the people are working virtually. And mm -hmm. therefore, neither uh, the industry is able to go and follow up for the refunds, nor in many cases, the mm -hmm. officials on the ground, you know, they are attending office. Mm -hmm. So many of them have started working from home. And mm -hmm. there are some logistics a challenge in terms of providing them the adequate IT infrastructure, etc. Few of them have it, few of them don't have it. Where they don't have it, of course, is a challenge. Hmm. Uh, then there are typical issues which are on the interpretation uh, uh, side, which is coming up in refund. For example, in, in some cases here in Gurgaon, the refund is stuck because the view which they have taken is that if there is an Indian subsidiary of a foreign company, which hmm. has the same name, Okay, hmm. which is the same name as in the same brand name, then they're saying it is it is is nothing but a you know establishment of the same entity. In other words, hmm. they're treating that as a as a branch of a overseas company, which correct. is factually not correct. Now hmm. we have raised this issue uh, with the Ministry of Finance, but some of these things you know take time to to get resolved. So interpretation hmm. issues on the ground is is another thing which is uh, which is coming up, and of course you know you can't uh, physically verify the documents and stuff like that. So in order to resolve this, what government needs to do is to say, perhaps that 80% or 90% of the refund, mm -hmm. I will sanction immediately, and particularly in cases where in the past refunds have been sanctioned after due process. That means mm -hmm. there is some level of comfort which already government has, that those right. refunds are, are genuine, right? Okay. So, uh, so in those cases, if 80%, 90% refund can be granted immediately, and mm -hmm. then you know the, uh, the process uh, can follow later, uh, then that will be very, uh, very, very helpful, and that's what we have uh, we have recommended. There is already a provision in the law uh, to that right. effect. It just needs to be implemented on the ground because industry needs immediate money. Because any solution oh. that you come up with, which takes less than six months from now uh, to implement, that is unfortunately not going to work. The other thing which comes to my mind is and it's slightly radical, but there are countries who have done that. And look, on one hand, you have uh, you know you, you have a, a GST refund which is stuck. On the other hand, the same companies have to pay things like advanced, advanced tax. I mean, so, and and to, to, to some extent, the, the tax is going to the same government, at least to the central GST and the income tax. Why don't okay. the government say that, look, this is amount is already stuck with you, is stuck with, uh, with us, and then there is a, you know, you are paying income tax. Why don't you allow a set off against that at this point in time? So idea is that how can you preserve cash? And uh, some bit of work has happened on the refund, but a lot still needs to be done. Okay, uh, noted a very, very uh, valid point. Uh, but on the other front, okay, we do understand, you know, the liquidity crunch, the cash crunch in the system, and, you know, there is no demand, and perhaps, you know, uh, the tax revision, mostly the relaxation in the taxation front will perhaps help the companies, you know, to increase the demand uh, or the consumption, specifically in the real estate sector or FMG sector. But how fair is this demand, considering, you know, even government's revenue will be at stake if, and when by any chance if they reduce the gst numbers because as and when they do it there will be a huge impact on the gst as well i mean talking about the collection pratik yeah so and therefore i'm saying that uh, a large scale exemption is not a possibility and i don't think industry at large is expecting mm -hmm. because I, I keep talking to a lot of people mm -hmm. but you know to to provide them liquidity support at this point in time is of utmost at, at important and for right. things like you know money which is already with the government is something which which is in in, in an inherent right uh, for the industry right. uh, you're right that uh, you know exemptions will impact the collection but you know when when situation uh, you know these kind of dire situations come then you have to take certain measures right. uh, which uh, which have to be taken and therefore i'm saying that government needs to be selective on, on those sectors where they really there is a long term impact, you know things like FMCG, right. for example, right. will quickly stand on its feet. Things uh, when things become uh, uh, become normal, right? Hmm. But industries such as real estate, entertainment, hospitality, etc., will take a lot of time because the consumption pattern of people are going to change. Right. Okay. 
and therefore and and real estate for example is uh, is, is such an industry which employs millions of people right in terms of uh, employment and True. most of them those labor migrant labor you know sort of laborers have gone back and for them to get it them back etc they need a lot of liquidity support uh, so True. i agree that uh, we have to we are working in a constrained environment but then uh, something has to be done uh, uh, for for uh, some of these companies uh well that's it uh, pratik thank you so much for sharing your insights and thank you so much for watching btcfo.com